To all who come to this happy kitchen, welcome. It's me, Lisa, happiest vegan on earth. And today we're making another copycat recipe of a Disneyland dish. So today it's actually from California Adventure and it's from the Food and Wine Festival. You may be familiar with the Impossible Meatball Sub that's been at the Food and Wine Festival the last couple of years. And we're gonna recreate this one today. And um, the Food and Wine Festival was tragically cut short this year, but it will probably resume once the parks reopen. And we don't know when the park is gonna reopen, but it could be soon. Walt Disney World is reopening um, July 11th and 15th. So um, who knows, California's on on a later timeline, so uh, it'll probably be later, we don't know. But until then, until the park reopens and until the Food and Wine Festival resumes, we can go ahead and make our own Impossible Meatball Subs at home. So let's get started to making this. So first we're gonna make the bread. I'm using a recipe for French bread by Mary's Test Kitchen and she's the master of all things baking. Um, if you saw my plant-based Philly dog video, I used her recipe for the uh, plant-based Philly dog hot dog bun as well. So um, I always trust her bread recipes and also this French bread I have made several times. Alrighty, it's my favorite bread recipe because it's the perfect balance of like really good quality bread, but it's not too complicated or it doesn't take too long. You have to let it rest for a while, but not as long as a lot of other uh, bread recipes I've found. So we want warm water, um, one cup of warm water, comfortably warm to the touch. I have used um, water that's too hot before and it didn't work. So um, you have to uh, actually have it warm um, and not super hot because the yeast has to bloom. So we're gonna do uh, two and a quarter teaspoons of the, I have this active dry yeast. Um, so I think instant yeast is the same for this. So um, two and a quarter teaspoons of the yeast and uh, we will check on it in about 10 minutes and hopefully it will be bub bubbly and foamy and then we know that it worked and we can move on with the rest of the bread. All right, so now it's been 10 minutes and we got a little bit of bubbling and foaming action so we're gonna continue on. We are just gonna add half a cup of flour to start and then one teaspoon of salt. Now we're just gonna combine this until it's uniform and then add the rest of the flour. So the rest of the flour is two cups of flour, so there's one more cup, and there's two more cups. And then we're just going to combine this until it's uniform and let it um, rest for just a few minutes. All right, so now we have a cohesive ball and we're gonna put it into a clean bowl and cover it and let it rest for 15 minutes. Um, I forgot to mention earlier that um, the reason I'm making it from scratch is because it's delicious and I love fresh bread, it really takes it to the next level, but um, it's not hard to find vegan bread at the grocery store. Obviously French bread um, is by definition vegan, so if it's a real French bread it should be vegan. I'll always read the ingredients list just in case, but um, you can make this recipe quicker. You can have your sub faster if you um, get a, a French bread from the grocery store, but I'm going to do it from scratch. So now it's been 15 minutes and we need to get it onto a floured surface to knead. We need to knead it. Um, Mary says in the recipe that um, it's good to knead it for at least 10 minutes and closer to 20 minutes is good as well. So I'm gonna put on a podcast to motivate me to go for a little longer. Um, my favorite podcasts are The Bearded Vegans and of course, uh, Mousealgia and Dateline Mousealgia. So I'm going to put one of those on and I will see you in 10 to 20 minutes. All right, so now it's been 15 minutes and we're gonna put it back in the bowl and it's going to rise now for about an hour. All right, so now it's been an hour and it did rise and I punched it down and now I'm going to knead it for um, just a couple more minutes and then we will put it back in the bowl and let it rise for one more hour. All right, so we did another hour of rising and now it's time to shape the loaves and do the final rise. So with this recipe, you can either do two large loaves or four personal size loaves. So of course we're gonna do the four personal size loaves for the Impossible Meatball Sub from the Food and Wine Festival. All right, so now we got our four pieces that are all rolled out. We need to cover this with a clean, damp kitchen towel, uh, and then they will rise like this for 45 more minutes, and then they will get into the oven. And then in the meantime, we'll start making our other ingredients. We need to make the marinara sauce and the Impossible Meatballs. So we'll start the marinara sauce because that'll take a little longer. All right, so now it's time to get the marinara sauce going. I have diced half of a yellow onion, so here's the other half, and then here's the half that I diced. So we're gonna get half a yellow onion in there, and I have um, a little bit of olive oil in my big stock pot, and that's going over medium heat right now. And then we're also gonna get three cloves of garlic in there. I have minced three cloves of garlic. So we're gonna saute these for just a couple minutes and then we'll add in the other ingredients. Okay, so the onions and garlic have been sauteing for just a couple minutes till they start to get a little translucent. You gotta watch them because, you know, that garlic can burn real quick. 
So I have a can of tomatoes here. These are San Manzano tomatoes. I have a 28 ounce can. So the very large can of tomatoes. These are whole tomatoes and they're gonna break up while we're cooking them. So I think whole is good. So we get the whole can in there. And one thing I notice people do when they make marinara sauce is they put a little bit of water in the can and then they swish it around and they put it in there as well. So I'm gonna try that. Um, maybe a quarter full of this can and um, swishing the water around. And then we'll put that in there too. Now we're gonna get all of our spices in there. So we're gonna do one teaspoon of oregano and then half a teaspoon of crushed red pepper and then half a teaspoon each of salt and pepper. And then last, we're gonna get a couple of sprigs of basil in there. So I have some fresh basil, we'll just put that in there and then we'll give this guy a mix. So I turned up the heat a little bit. I wanna get it to a simmer and then I'll lower the heat and cover it. And we want to let it cook where um, we can mash up these tomatoes as we go and that'll be at least 30 minutes. All right, so we've got it up to a simmer and I'm just gonna try to squish these tomatoes a little bit and then I'll cover it and squish some more, but this is very exciting. It's like popping bubble wrap a little bit. <laughs> it's, it's pretty fun. <laughs> All right, so the bread has finished its last rise and we're gonna get in the oven now. I have the oven preheated to 450 and you wanna score it. I'm gonna go ahead and score all of them just um, straight down the middle like this. This is gonna go in the oven and what you need to do here, I've seen this in a lot of other bread recipes too, is that you have a baking sheet um, underneath as well. So that's already in there, the other baking sheet. And we're gonna pour water onto that as we start it and it's gonna create steam and something about that is um, good for making bread. So I'm gonna do that off camera because it requires um, some motor skills that I don't wanna be holding the camera for. But basically I'm gonna um, spray these down with water on the top and then have a cup of water ready to go and put these in and then pour the water um, through, like in beneath, under to the other baking sheet and then close. And then we're going to bake them. So now we're gonna get our impossible meatballs going. So I have everything prepped here. I diced half an onion, as small as I had the patience for. And then I uh, minced two of these Baby Bella mushrooms. So I wanted about half a cup of these mushrooms, diced real small. And then I did three cloves of garlic that I minced. And then I also chopped a little bit of fresh basil. And then we've got the thyme, oregano, salt and pepper again, and some breadcrumbs. So we're just going to get one package of Impossible Meat and then throw everything in together in the bowl. So the bread is in the oven. I got a timer set for that so we don't forget about it. And then we're gonna get the meatballs together. So I'm gonna put everything in. I have my half a cup, or half, one half of a yellow mushroom that I've diced. And then I've got my half a cup of the mushrooms. I think any mushrooms are fine. Um, I have the Baby Bella mushrooms. And then um, it was about two of those medium sized mushrooms to get to the half cup I wanted. And then we'll get the basil in there. And then let's go ahead and get the spices in there before we get the impossible meat in. So I want one tablespoon of the oregano, one tablespoon of thyme, and then half a teaspoon each of salt and pepper. And then the breadcrumbs, we want two tablespoons of breadcrumbs. I just have these uh, breadcrumbs from Trader Joe's. Uh, I've never had a problem where the breadcrumbs weren't vegan that I bought before. So, but always read the ingredients list, but um, I've always found that breadcrumbs are vegan. So we want two tablespoons of these breadcrumbs. All right, so I'm gonna give this a mix real quick. Okay, now it's time to get the Impossible Meat in. So um, up until recently, these were only available at Gelson supermarkets, but they've um, expanded to a bunch more different grocery stores. I think Albertsons and some other ones. So um, they may be available at grocery stores that you were not able to find them at previously. So look up if you can find Impossible Meat in your area. And they also announced today that they're doing delivery very soon, they said. Um, and then the other thing is that you can use Impos you can use um, Beyond Meat instead. So Beyond Beef, it'll, it's like a rectangle just like this, but it says Beyond Beef. And um, I'm sure it will work in a very similar way. So you could use Beyond if you prefer that or if that's what you're able to find. Um, and you can also use any plant-based meat that you like. But of course I'm using Impossible because that's what they use in California Adventure. Now that I actually have cooked with Impossible at home before, I'm less weirded out by it um, because I made the uh, the other, the round list wrap <laughs> before. So it's a little less weird to me, but it's still pretty weird. <laughs> Look, it's made of plants. Can you believe this is made of plants? It's so weird. <laughs> I actually, it's a lot less gross to me now. Like the first time I did it, it was like really pretty weird. And it was, I had to like get over it. <laughs> but um, now I don't really feel like I have to get over it. It's like fine, I can touch it all day, which I'm gonna do right now because you gotta squish it in here. <laughs> so we're just gonna squish it all around 
And then once you're ready to go, you can actually do it two ways. You can either bake them in the oven, um, but I'm doing the bread right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it on the stove instead. So I have my nonstick pan. You could do a little bit of oil if you want, and I'm going to fry them on the stove, but um, baking would also work as well. So that's all incorporated now, and I'm just gonna go ahead and get to frying these up on the stove. So I just got the bread out of the oven, and those went way faster than I thought they would, and so um, they're a little bit dark. A little bit overdone. Actually, this one looks pretty good, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that one, but the others are like super dark. I don't know, that's a question. But anyway, um, I think at least one is edible. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna make the meatballs. It's gonna be fine, it's gonna be delicious. All right, so we're in the home stretch now. It's time to get the meatballs into the frying pan. So I've got it just over low for now. We'll turn it up a little bit and we will form the meatballs. I'm trying to make them about the size that I remember them being at the Food and Wine Festival. All right, so my meatballs are kind of giant. I think I was inspired by what they announced for uh, Avengers Campus. They announced that they're going to have an impossible meatball dish with one giant meatball and a tiny fork. I think I was looking at pictures of that giant meatball that's going to be in, in Marvel Land. <laughs> it's okay though. So I got um, five, six, seven, I got seven of them. I think I was going to try to get 12, but it's okay. We got seven very large meatballs and then we're just going to turn those um, and make sure they get browned on all the sides and then um, we'll be ready to put everything together. All right, so now it's time to plate it up. I have my French bread here. And I think I'm only gonna get like two of these in there because um, I made the meatballs really big. <laughs> and then we'll get some marinara on top of there. We don't wanna cover it up completely so you can still see the meatballs. It's like the, the happy medium between, you want it to be super saucy, but also you want it to not cover up everything. And then for garnish, we're gonna do some parsley. I just chopped up some parsley that I had on my patio. What they're using at California Adventure is actually the Dea mozzarella shreds, so that's what I'm using, but you can use any vegan cheese that you like. There are many delicious ones. I don't know, uh, people have different opinions about whether Dea is the best one. I like Follow Your Heart a lot or uh, Vio Life, but oh my goodness, the, that last garnish always makes you feel like, yeah, that's it. All right, there we are. Looks pretty close to what you have at uh, California Adventure, I think. It's starting to get dark out there. You guys know the struggle of the food photographer when it gets dark outside. <laughs> um, but I think we got a decent photo, even though it is starting to get quite dark. Um, so let's see what this tastes like. Ooh, that is good. If I hadn't overbaked the bread, it would be better, <laughs> but it is still really, really good. Look at the impossible meatball. I did it a little bit rare. You can see there's still a tiny bit of pink, um, but with Impossible Meat, you can just do it how you like. Um, you can do it a little bit rare, or you can do it uh, medium, or you can do it well done. That's the beauty, beauty of Impossible Meat, is that it can be done in different ways. So it's a little bit on the rare side, which I, which I like. Oh man, these meatballs are so good. I really like the um, amount of garlic and the onions, both in the marinara and the meatballs, and the mushrooms too. So you couldn't even tell that there's mushrooms in there. If, if someone didn't tell you that there's mushrooms, you probably wouldn't really perceive the mushrooms. So for people who don't like mushrooms, I think you could still sneak in some mushrooms this way. Um, and I think it adds a lot to the flavor. Oh man, that is so good. I can't handle it. <laughs> uh, so good. So I think for the other meatballs that I have left over, I'll just make some spaghetti and those will be spaghetti and meatballs. All right, so I'm gonna finish this up. Please give the video a thumbs up if you found it helpful or informative or entertaining and subscribe for more content about vegan options at Disneyland. And let me know in the comments um, which copycat recipe you'd like me to make next of something in Disneyland. I already made a few, so you can check out the rest of my channel. I have a playlist of all of these copycat recipes. So you can go ahead and see what else you wanna make next and let me know what else we should be making until Disneyland opens again. So until next time, I'll see you real soon.